Hi, Gary Morzinski back again to continue our work on Chapter 3. We are ready to talk about the Law of Supply. The Law of Supply says that as the price of the product rises, the quantity supplied by all sellers in the market will also rise. As the price of the product decreases, the quantity supplied by all sellers in the market will also decrease. Other things equal, or satiris paribus, if nothing else changes but the price of the product, that is what will happen. So the price of the product and the quantity supplied by sellers will move in the same direction. So then the supply of the product, again, is made up of all of the product that is brought to market by all of the sellers. And we're going to express that both in a supply schedule and in a supply curve once we graph the supply schedule. So what is the explanation for the law of supply? Well, it's easier to explain than the law of demand was. The law of supply, again, says that as the price goes up, the quantity supplied by sellers will also go up. Other things equal. So this is assuming that nothing else is changing but the price of the product. So if, for example, the price is going up, but the costs to produce the product per unit are not going up, then you would want to produce more because when the price goes up, your total revenue goes up. And if nothing else is changing but the price, again, that means that your cost per unit is not going up, but your profit per unit is going up. So it's more profitable to produce more. So sellers will want to produce and bring more to the market if the price is rising. And then if the price is decreasing, of course, the opposite will happen. It will be less profitable per unit, other things equal, if only the price is changing and the price is decreasing. And so for that reason, price and quantity supplied will move in the same direction. So here is, on the left, a table of values. That is a supply schedule. And this is the same market for corn that we discussed earlier, except this is one individual supplier. This is one seller of corn in this market. So again, think of this as maybe being the market for corn in downtown Nanticoke at the farmer's market. And if the market price happens to be $3, this one supplier will bring 35 bushels to market. If the pri price were to rise to $4, this one seller would bring 50 bushels to market. So that's an increase, which again is the law of supply. If the price were to drop from $3 to $2, this one supplier would bring only 20 bushels. And so if we graph those points, you can see there is our supply curve an upward sloping curve because again both of these variables are moving in the same direction price and quantity supplied again I'll remind you that whenever we have Q on the x-axis quantity either supplied or demanded it's always quantity per unit time units of the product per unit time so that really should be identified on the curve and in the table if you have a supply schedule and it is here you can see it's quantity supplied per week Just as with the demand curve for an individual buyer, we were just looking at the supply curve for an individual seller. The market supply is made up of the aggregate or the sum of each of the individual supplies of each of the sellers in this market, just like we saw with the demand curve. Now, if the only thing that changes is the price of the product, you move along the supply curve. So, for example, in this case, if the market price changes from $2, and these points don't exactly line up with the grid, but imagine that that point was at the intersection of 2 and quantity supplied 6. If the price changes from $2, where 6 bushels would be supplied, and rises to $3, then 8 bushels would be supplied. The only thing that changed in, the, in this case was the price of the product, so we move along the curve. That results in a change in the quantity supplied. If something other than the price changes that impacts supply, then we say there's a change to overall supply. If the curve is shifting to the right, 
that represents an increase in overall supply. If the curve is shifting to the left, that represents a decrease in overall supply. And so what are these supply curve shifters? Sometimes they're called the determinants of supply. Well, there's going to be five of those, just like there were five demand curve shifters. So let's take a look at them. The first and most obvious supply curve shifter would be changes in resource prices. So remember that businesses, in order to produce their products and bring them to market, take on resource costs. They have to purchase or pay for the use of resources. What if, say, one of the key resources that you have to pay for rises? Then it's more costly per unit to produce your product. You're going to want to produce less of it at any given market price. And so are your competitors. So are the rest of the suppliers. So if your resource prices rise, that will lead to a decrease in overall supply in the market. If your resource prices go down, your resources get less expensive, then it's less expensive for you per unit to produce your product and bring it to market. That's going to make you want to produce more at every possible price. That will lead to an increase in overall supply. So this uh, shifts the supply curve either to the right or to the left. So let's think of an example. Suppose you are a commercial airline. What would be a key resource that you purchase uh, there's one in particular I'm thinking of that has a volatile price. That's right, jet fuel. So what if you are a commercial airline like American Airlines and the price of jet fuel were to go up by 25%. Now it's more costly for you to produce your product. Your product is air travel. So you're going to look for ways to reduce the amount of air travel you're producing. You probably look at your schedule, your daily schedule, and you start removing the less profitable routes from your schedule. When you do that, and your competitors are doing that too, that shifts the overall supply of air travel to the left, decrease in overall supply. If the cost of jet fuel were to go down by 25%, you would do the opposite. You'd want to produce more air travel because it's less costly per unit to produce your air travel. So you would look for routes to add to the schedule daily, and so would your competitors. Technology, and again I'll remind you whenever we use the term technology in an economics class, we're talking about production technology. So if production technology, the technology you use to produce your product, were to improve, if the state of the art were to advance, then it's less costly per unit to produce your product. Each worker has more valuable capital to work with now, more valuable and more capable technology, and so each worker can produce more output. And so this is the one supply, uh, supply curve shifter that only goes in one direction because technology only goes forward, it doesn't go backwards. So as technology advances, and this happens all the time in our economy, then this leads to an increase in overall supply. So technology is advancing all the time, but it happens unevenly. You know, it's not constant. You know, there may be a decade where there's significant increases in the advancement of technology in any one given industry. And so there's an acceleration of uh, productivity in that industry. And then supply curves in that industry shift to the right. And then it might be sort of stagnant for a decade. Uh, but it's the one shifter that only goes in the forward direction, it only shifts the supply curves to the right. Other things equal. Now taxes and subsidies also act on the supply curve. Now this is taxes on producers. This is not a sales tax on buyers, it's a tax on producers. If sellers in any given market were to be taxed per unit of the product they are supplying or selling or producing, then that would have the effect of raising the per unit cost to produce that product, and you'd want to produce less of it. And so this would cause the supply curve to shift to the left, decrease in overall supply. A good local example of this is, and we are in Pennsylvania, the natural gas industry in the last 10 years has really grown up from almost nothing and there has been discussion 
at the state level, the governor in particular, of applying a, an extraction tax on suppliers, on the oil drillers, on, on I'm sorry, the natural gas drillers, uh, per unit that they produce. Now, they're taxed already, but this would be a tax per unit that they're producing, a new tax. And so those that oppose this tax, the drillers themselves, and the Republican legislature argue that this will shift overall supply to the left. This will decrease overall supply as you add a new tax. And uh, you're not ready for this discussion yet, but that's that would raise the market price. Other things equal, if that's the only thing that were happening. Uh, so they're, t they're making an economic argument, really, to oppose this tax. Now, a subsidy is like a negative tax. This is where the government subsidizes an industry per unit of the product they're producing. We see this kind of thing in agricultural markets. And so when that happens, maybe it's in the form of a tax break, a subsidy. Well, now it's less expensive per unit to produce your product. And this will lead to an increase in overall supply. It shifts the supply curve to the right. Now, remember, I've been saying if the only thing that happens is the price of the product changes, you move along the curve. Do you remember that? That applies to the supply curve. It also applies to the demand curve. Well, this supply curve shifter is something different. This is the price of some other product in a different market that is perhaps related to the product that's being produced in this market. If the price of other goods were to go up or go down, especially if they're sort of related from the supplier's point of view, that could shift the supply curve in this market. So here's an example. Suppose I am a supplier and I'm producing something. Uh, let's see, the example we have on this slide is we are producing soccer balls. If it becomes, if the market price for volleyballs or basketballs were to go up, that's a different market, right? That means it's more profitable, relatively speaking, to produce volleyballs or basketballs. I'm going to shift the use of my resources to producing those other things. I'm moving my resources, in other words, out of this market into those other markets to produce those other more profitable things. That shifts the supply curve for soccer balls to the left, decrease in overall supply. And competitors might do the same thing. Now, these are very related products you're seeing as an example. But it might be uh, products that are maybe not all that uh, uh, similar. Still, if something else becomes more profitable to produce, I may even liquidate all of my resources, liquidate all my capital, purchase new capital to produce this new thing that's more profitable to produce. When this kind of thing happens, by the way, this is an aside, this is what's known as allocative efficiency. If your economic system facilitates this kind of flow of resources out of less profitable markets into more profitable markets, then you have uh, allocative efficiency. What makes a market more profitable? Consumer demand is increasing. So it's all led by the consumer. Again, these are features of the market system economy. And if I haven't said this yet, all of Chapter 3 is assuming that you have a market system economy and not a command system economy or some other form of an economy. So this is the market mechanism at work, right? Just as with demand, if producer expectations are optimistic or pessimistic, it could affect the supply curve and shift it to the right or to the left. Now think about this. If you are a producer, if you're a seller, what is it that's the most important thing to be either optimistic about or pessimistic about? The market price of your product in the future. So if you are producing, you're a U.S. oil producer, and you're thinking about what the market price will be six months from now, and war breaks out in the Middle East, that normally means the market price will go up because there's going to be an interruption of supply channels, maybe an interruption of production, oil production in these oil producing countries where the war is happening. And so that will act to raise the market price in the future. So if you think that's going to happen and you're a U.S. oil producer, 
you might withhold some of your product from the market now. So then now the supply curve will shift to the left because others will be doing the same thing, other suppliers. If they think the market price is going to be higher in six months from now, they might continue to produce, but they might stockpile and hold in inventory the oil now. And then six months from now, the plan would be to release it on the market at the higher market price. So that's how producer expectations could shift the, mark, uh, the supply curve. If there's an increase in the overall number of sellers in the market, this will shift the supply curve to the right, increase in overall supply. If there's a decrease in the number of sellers, it shifts it to the left. And again, this has to do with some of these shifters are overlapping. It could be that uh, the reason that the number of sellers is incre increasing is because this is a more popular product to produce. The market price is higher. That's going to attract sellers into this market. As that happens, it shifts the supply curve to the right. And we'll see what the effects on market price are shortly when we bring it all together and talk about the, the inter intersection of supply and demand. That's coming up shortly. But here's a summary of the supply curve shifters. If there's a change in resource prices, that could lead to an increase or decrease in overall supply. If technology advances, that only does one thing. It shifts the supply curve to the right, increase in overall supply. If producers or sellers are either taxed or subsidized, that makes producing their product more expensive or less expensive and shifts the supply curve. If there's a change in the price of other goods that I could use my resources to produce, that will affect the supply curve because I'll either leave this market and others will too, shifting the supply curve to the left, or maybe others will enter this market with their resources to start producing this product. If producers are optimistic about the future market price of their product, that will affect the supply curve. If they're pessimistic about the future market price of their product, that will affect the supply curve. And then again, if there's an increase or decrease in the number of sellers, that shifts it to the right or to the left. And I think you're ready for a quiz. This is the market for apple juice, and we're only interested in supply right now. So what happens in the market for apple juice when each of these scenarios occurs? All right, so the first is grocery stores cut the price of apple juice. So think about that. And remember, I want you to think about does this affect the quantity supplied or does this affect overall supply? If it affects overall supply, then the supply curve is shifting to the right or to the left. So which direction? I'm going to ask you to, to uh, answer that as well. Grocery stores cut the price of apple juice. Well, the only thing that's changing is the price of the product. So this does not shift the curve. Remember that? And if the price of the product goes down, the quantity supply goes in the same direction, doesn't it? That's the law of supply. As the price goes from P1 to P2, price of apple juice, the quantity supplied goes from Q1 to Q2, a decrease in the quantity supplied. That is the answer. Question B asks, what if there's a technological advancement, the state of the art in the technology used to produce apple juice advances and allows apple juice to be produced at a lower cost, what would happen? Now that one's a supply curve shifter. Remember I told you that? And technology only shifts the curve in one direction. Increase in overall supply, right? And so this could be some sort of automation maybe that's used to produce apple juice or maybe it's some sort of uh, new fertilizer that's super effective in growing apples. Uh, something like that. The technology used to produce apple juice advances. That's going to be the result. And then the last question asks, what if grocery stores cut the price of orange juice? So this is not the price of apple juice that's changing. It's the price of orange juice. And so think about this one. 
bearing in mind that this, this could be a trick question. Grocery stores cut the price of orange juice. So that's a product in a different market. How are these two products related? Well, we've already established they could be substitutes for some percentage of the buyers. If the price of a substitute product changes, what does that do? Here's the part that makes this a trip question. We're talking about supply here. If the price of a substitute product changes, that shifts the demand curve, not the supply curve. So other things equal, without any other information, it doesn't do anything to the supply curve. So that's why it was a trick question. And now it's time to bring it all together. It's time for the big reveal, but not now. We will address this in the next video.